Hello, gentle viewers. This is Zav Guardian, welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 24 with the Oakland Athletics. Um, in our previous episode, we completed another exciting offseason full of lots of interesting new players. Um, the most important of whom is new second baseman Hisato Takimoto. Uh, who has spent an awful lot of money on in free agency, and we're hoping that we'll see some really good stuff out of him. Um, other new A's include uh, the returning Robbie Herbertson, who's taking over a third base, hopefully giving our good pal Nelson Vigil a bit of a chance to, to work up to a full schedule. Um, we have new shortstop uh, Juan Pineda, who at least features fantastic defense if he's not a great offensive player. Uh, Joe Stock returns as our starting catcher, and all the rest of these guys should be names that we're fairly familiar with. Uh, Brandon Bays, you may recall, played for us a little bit last season but got hurt. Um, now he's going to have a chance to be a full-time DH, and we'll see what he can accomplish there. And then Chris Orr, who was a late addition to the franchise, but a much a very welcome one. Um, so we'll see what these folks can all manage over the course of the season. Our rotation is pretty similar to last year's, with the change of Zary and Dennis shifting from the bullpen to the rotation, which might already prove to be a great choice. Our bullpen is full of a lot of longtime pals. Um, I think we have at least one Rule 5 guy, though. I'm pretty sure we have at least one guy that I grabbed off the Rule 5 draft. Um, she it to, uh, to be there ready to baseball. Um, this is also, I need to double check and I will do so momentarily. This is also potentially our last episode, our last, uh, our second last episode of the A's, third to last. I don't know how numbers work. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, let's see. Chris McManus is new. That's the guy I was thinking of. We, uh, we got him in the Rule 5 draft, and we're going to give him a chance to see what he can do for us. Um, yeah, we've got some pretty talented players on this team, and if they can reach their potential, this could be a dominant team for years to come. Um, so if we quickly look at the managerial history here, began in 2023 and is currently 2045 meaning we have managed for 22 years i don't want to say 25 years 24 years i think you're maybe delusional because it's definitely not 24 years that says 24 years that's not accurate it is currently no it, this is our 20 no this is our 23rd year Right? Am I just terrible at math? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. This is your 24. That is accurate. So I want to leave this up to you guys, to you amazing people who have supported this series for a while now. Do we stop in year 25, or do we keep going? Um, I We have a lot of really talented young players, like really talented young players, and I kind of like to see how they work out. That is definitely a part of me that would love to see how we can get along with Chris Orr, Kisato Takimoto, Nelson Vigil, leading the franchise into the future alongside more established hands like Sean DeWitt and Sam Laws. And this rotation could be stupid. Like, stupid good. So, I don't know. Um, I am kind of ready to try something else, but if you guys are still enjoying it, I'm also fine to keep going. We haven't had a Hall of Famer yet. Um, and that might be a while. Well, I think Sean DeWitt has a pretty good chance of making the Hall of Fame. Um, he's already at 63 wins above replacement for his career. And the thing is, he hasn't started slowing down yet. 
Um, but he might not retire for a few more years. So it's going to be an interesting question as we proceed. Um, but for right now, let's not dilly-dally and play some baseball. Um, it should be a good time, maybe. Or maybe not. Ah, uh, we've got uh, a couple of individuals who were destined to do for assignment. Let's send up both to the minors. Are you being a little bitch, Divinity? Where you're like, I don't want to go down. Mm. Yedelson Divinity is one of the dumbest decisions I've ever made. I have come to grips with that now. I tried to get cute. And sign him thinking he would be a franchise cornerstone. And he's ranged from decent to outright terrible. Um, will literally anybody trade him for, with me? I will take on fucking salary for the right player. I could get Raheem Sinius back. Um, I don't think so. Not for the amount of money they want. Oh, this actually gives me a useful player versus a player that isn't that useful. Um... I will take on this deal. I know this is going to make the owner pissy, but he'll get over it. Oh, thank you to the person who said that the issue is profit. That the franchise has to make profit for us to be not over budget. Um, I recognize I probably just, like, nuked our budget, but it's fine. Uh, I might even be able to trade Sinius, actually. I wonder if I can trade Sinius for anything. Like an interesting prospect. No, it's it's all worse. Um, that's fine. Let's go ahead and make a spot for him on the major league roster. Um I'm gonna wave Moreno. And we're gonna see if we can we, we might lose him. If we do, that's fine. But I generally think that Sinius gives us a more potent offense. Um, it does us hurt us. If we quickly take a look at accounting. Are we projected to earn money this year? Yeah, we're projected. Like, the budget says we're going to lose money. Uh, so I guess this is probably what they were referring to. Even though, actually, if, you know, we're actually projected to make money um in the long term but no actually no we are actually projected to lose money i guess it was here the whole time i just didn't pay attention to it so we'll see if adding raheem sinius was worth it but probably not anyways uh bobby stole for 60 days i know he technically could go back quicker than that but i'd rather grew up the roster spot does create an interesting challenge Like, Juan Kaleha instantly becomes, like, my most reasonable starting pitching choice, and I kind of hate it. I'm going to have the game reset the rotation. Mort King as a starter is a terrible idea. Do I have a starting pitcher anywhere reasonably hot? Dan Downing is not a starter. He's not ready for the big leagues, even if he were. I'm going to call up Phil Dixon, and I'm going to let the AI decide who becomes our new starter. We don't have a ton of, we don't have a ton of depth in the rotation the way that we used to. We'll probably need to do something about that in the short to medium term. Um, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it.
Which is somewhat ironic, because we spent an awful lot of time crowing about how good our starters are. And our starters are quite good. Um, but we don't really have Major League Ready replacements uh, in case of injuries. So that's something we'll probably want to address as the season moves along. Uh, maybe take some of our higher-ranked prospects in other positions and try to get ourselves a young starter or two. We are off to a reasonably good start. And Nelson Vigil is improving quite rapidly, which is excellent news. Um, Mitch Vaughn is making himself known, which is good news. A few other people getting slightly better. Some people getting sent to words like Chris Guevara. Um, okay, good. Not really good, but... I am intrigued by Josh Tukes. I think Mr. Tukes here could end up being a starting short, a starting center fielder given the opportunity. Um... Uh, too early in the season to really make any decisions yet. Let's go ahead and scoot along to the end of May. Yeah, I have a really thin rotation. Can you quit it, game? Can you just stop? Um, Stoll's gonna be back soonish. Um, I guess I'll call up Jerry Sigmund for now, but I do want an actual starting pitcher or two. Let's take a quick peek at the free agency pool and see who might be available to be a starting pitcher for us. And I want pitching ratings, please and thank you. Really nobody interesting. Okay. What do I have that other teams would covet? Like, What do we have something really, really good at? Dan Whitsett is a pretty decent position player. And the thing is, at first base, I have some decent options. I could trade Brad Rice. Let's try trading Brad Rice, actually. Let's start with him, and we're going to look at starting pitchers and see who might be available. Jody Kuhn is a pretty talented pitcher, but I cannot afford that. If you're willing to work with me on his salary, I would happily add Jody Kuhn. Um, and I think this would be a pretty valuable trade. Uh, but I definitely need you to eat some of his salary. Why don't you eat his entire salary? Okay, that's not going to happen. No, I'm not giving you a, a genuinely fantastic player to make this more palatable. And I can't give you any of the guys you're asking for. I can't do it, not for Kuhn. Um, he's a really good pitcher. I just don't have the money. So let's look at some of the other options available to us. Rusty Bossy would be a decent choice. Um... He's a pretty smart guy. He just probably needs a bit more of an opportunity than he's gotten. I think Bossy is very much worthwhile. So we're going to make this trade. And then I'm going to send down um, Eaton. Eaton Park for Rusty Bossy. 
and we'll see what that accomplishes here. So I just threw Chris McManus into the rotation. It's actually terrible. Would you just... Oh my god, game. It seems like the AI is obsessed with what if we got a ridiculous bullpen guy instead without recognizing we can't have terrible starting pitching. A Chris McManus is a good pitcher. Maybe he'll prove me wrong, but... We've gone from a very deep and powerful rotation to a very, very shallow one. Um, I do want to trade Mr. Whitsett here for a pitching prospect specifically. So let's see what's on the cards here. I can't even get a 50. I can get a 45. That's as good as I'm going to get. I don't think it's worth it trading him for something that's that unimpressive. Um... Juan Rojas is pretty decent. I guess we'll just fix it, figure it out for right now and hope that Stoll comes back and, and feels pretty good and so does Rivera. But we are... We're in some issues here. Uh, there's another even bigger issue that we haven't talked about yet. This one right here. So here's what I like about Sam Laws. He is an on-base machine that has enough power to make that on-base ability really valuable to me. And he's been a tremendous hitter, and he's extremely durable. I guess the only reason I would hesitate to re-sign him is that he is wanting a lot of money. Um... For a long-term deal, say a seven-year deal, what are you looking for? I am not opposed to that deal. He has given us two full seasons, and he's durable. Yeah, I think we go ahead and offer Edwards the extension. Let's do that while I'm thinking about it. And maybe get a team option at the end if he's willing. Uh, but this seems like a deal that was likely to age well. Um, so keeping RJ Edwards is really important. If we do get him, then we'll see how much money is left for Laws. I might honestly be willing to let Laws walk. For compensation at the end of the year. But we'll see. We will see. But I do think that's the right decision to keep Edwards. And because I've got a ton of. I've got a ton of really valuable and really power, really good outfield prospects. So spending a huge amount of money on Sam Laws is probably not a great idea. It's probably not a great use of scarce resources. Um, but we'll see. Um, we will see. See, various players went in various directions. Mike Ellie getting worse doesn't make me happy. Uh, Brandon Bay's getting better makes me happy. Um, this is all things I mostly knew. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's look at the first month of play. How are we doing as a franchise? We are scoring runs at a comically huge rate, which is fantastic. Uh, we're first in most categories in the league, which is awesome. Um, which is ironic because 
our best players aren't playing their best yet. Nelson Vigil is playing well, but I think he's miscast where he is. I don't think him batting first is a great way for us to be here, but he's drastically cut his strikeout rate. And that has already seen a huge improvement in his overall talent level. Sinius seems like he's a bit wasted. I wouldn't mind trading him right now to get the payroll off, but I don't think anyone's going to take him. We can we can but ask, though. All we can do is ask. And if we get told fuck off, then we get told fuck off. Um, who else is, is performing? It's a... Sean DeWitt is doing Sean DeWitt things. Like, I'm, I've run out of ways to describe how great he is. He's truly phenomenal in every sense of the word. Uh, Takimoto has been everything I hoped for and a little bit more. He's an offensive machine, and he's a pretty good second baseman to boot. He's been a, a very worthwhile player. Sam Laws is also playing extremely well, mostly in his ability to draw walks. No, I can't really afford to bring him back, I don't believe. Now that complete is destroying all my financial flexibility, and we have to have some of that if we're going to continue to be successful in the medium term. Um, Chris Orr is what he says on the tin. He hits lots and lots of home runs but doesn't contribute a huge amount outside of hitting home runs. There's nothing at all wrong with that, and I think he's a good fit for this team because we don't have the big power threat. Um, Tommy Weefy is also not very good. I think he's another player that I think I spent too much money on. Um, right now he's a very meh outfielder, and I'd rather let a youngster have that spot and become something more than meh, if that was a possibility. Let's trade Mr. Weathy here and see if anybody's willing to help me out. Probably not, but we can ask. Uh, there's some decent choices being offered here. Um, I mean, Juan Mijares is an excellent fourth outfielder. I wouldn't let him start. Let me get Mijares, and let me try to get Gaunt, too. If I can get both, I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty happy. And then I will simulate a day. The pitch staff is doing great. Um, arguably even better. You're not asking for a ton in addition to get both players. You can have Korea complete trade um and then we're gonna go ahead and call up ibarra and we're gonna see how he fits into the grand scheme of things um i really need one more picture i have how many pictures right now no i said pictures i have 13 okay then we're fine um, let's go ahead and advance time. I probably overpay for average talent than I probably should. Um, oh, we should be getting Bobby Stoll back quite soon. Here we go. Um, Braxton May is finally getting a chance to start, which is pretty exciting. We're going to go and send Dixon down, and we're going to activate Bobby Stoll. This is not great news. Um, I don't enjoy that. Really? Come on, team. I'm missing five days. This isn't even enough to put him on the IL, so it's not worth, what, messing with it right now? 
Uh, getting Rivera back is pretty big, though. I do enjoy having Wilfredo Rivera back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and send Jerry Sigmund to the minors. And then we can activate Rivera, and we'll have our full rotation back. Game. It happened again. Why do I do this? I should not. I should never sign anybody to new contracts. Clearly, I don't know what I'm doing. Every time they start randomly declining. Uh, thank you, Max Sheffield. Um, you're becoming a very viable pitcher now, which you weren't just a few seconds ago, which is very welcome. Um, let's go ahead and advance up to the draft. Uh, fuck off, dude. Just stop. Well, if I can just basically tell him to fuck off and all of his goals, and his, and yeah. How has Ronnie Small done? Not great. Uh, let's get some coaches resigned, shall we? I think Jose Perez has probably passed his prime already. I'd like to find him, and I'd like to find a new coach to replace him. Um, actually, let's let Pig Yellow walk. He's even less useful. Yeah, I think we'll have both these coaches walk, and then let's go and offer all the minor league coaches extensions. Malcolm Owens is amazing. Let's go ahead and, and keep him around. Grolman Gonzalez, absolutely keep him. I just want to keep all the coaches for a season, and we'll just see, and we'll probably make some promotions. But I do think we need to try to start pursuing some better relationships with, um, with players. Try to get the most out of them. The thing is, our guys played so much, it has dropped off the list. Like, I can't do very much about that. Like, I could play a worse guy, but that seems like that would be bad. We'd lose more games. And we need to win more games, not fewer games. Is Wilson Disla on my radar? I mean, I'd love to have him, but the Nationals would be fucking stupid to give him to me. Like, I bet I could offer him David Galindo and Sean DeWitt, and you'd laugh in my face. Oh, he just vetoes it. Fine. Uh, Dennis. Yeah. It'll never happen. I appreciate it. I do appreciate your your ideas, but it's it's just not happening. Um, It's not. So we pretty badly need a uh, high-level starting pitching talent. It is essential for our future success. I'm hoping that other teams are really desperate for offensive talent, which will let some of these pitchers fall to me potentially, but we'll see. Uh, there is one starting pitcher of 
better than average potential that is available to me. Josh Bradford. Nope. I don't like the weak third pitch. Um, I don't know that he's going to be a successful guy. I guess I could look here at Chase Dorvillier. Much better mix of pitches. Good stamina, but very expensive. And I have, I have some money to spend, but... What if we go for value right now? Just find the best possible player and then try to grab a guy later in the draft. I know when he's starting pitching talent. Understood. But I'm just not convinced Bradford's going to be that successful. And maybe he's fine and I'm overthinking this. He's an extreme ground baller. Decent numbers against relatively hard, relatively challenging um, competition. Very adaptable, very loyal, and low financial ambition. At the very least, he could be cheap. I guess I'll take Bradford. I don't feel great about it, but I will do it. Um, I was hoping to get several starting pictures in this draft. Clearly, I've made a I've made a strategic error because they just aren't here anymore. Uh, Bob Matson. Really good reliever. Big dude. But he pitched at a really bad school, meaning I can't trust his numbers at all. But I trust my scout. He could actually turn into a starter. I will draft Bob Matson and offer him and offer his demand. I like Josh Knight quite a bit. I don't think he's a second baseman, but I do think he's a pretty talented outfielder. I think a raw talent of this magnitude is just, it's too good to pass up. All right. Show me pitching potential and show me stuff. Let's take Brad Kleinsmith, Kleinsmith rather. He's a really good pitcher. And I'll meet his demand. I'm going to try taking Billy Fremont with the idea of maybe making him into a starter. Um, but I'm going to try it, and the worst thing he could do is tell me now. Now let's take a look at everybody else. Edgar Otero stuck around here for a while. I can kind of see why, though. He's not a very good player. Like, maybe you can make something of yourself as a university kid, but I know your potential is decent. I think it's only because you're a second baseman. You don't have a lot of offensive tools, and you're not a very good defender. I don't, I don't think that's a good player. DJ Campbell is thoroughly average. I mean, I guess it's not going to cost you very much, so I'll take it, but... Not a fan. I do like Julio Falcones. I think we can take him. He seems like a decent choice. It is comical to me that nobody is, is even trying him. But I think it's the right call. I think it's a waste of draft pick. And it's money. Um, when I've got a guy like Mike Johan, who at least has a few more interesting offensive skills, 
you know, he's playing for, you know, like, a really bad college. Like, I don't think an eighth round pick is unfair. I think I've got what I wanted from this draft. It wasn't an exciting draft. I will acknowledge that. Um, I needed pitching, and I got pitching. But how we got the pitching is interesting. I think we have to sign Josh Knight. I have to be willing to back up the Brinks truck. I have the money. Let's offer him $12 million. And what does Billy Freeman need? He wants way too much money. That's not happening. Uh, I will let you walk rather than pay you $12 million. If I knew you'd come into a starter, I would pay it. But I don't think you will. Um, All-star game roster. Not one of my pitchers besides Rogelio Morales is an interesting choice. Sean DeWitt made it. Sam Laws made it. Hisako, Hisato Takimoto made it. Really? Oh, Brexter May also made it. Fair. I have got some damn good starting pitchers. Like, I'm genuinely shocked Bobby Stoll didn't make it or that RJ Edwards didn't make it. Anyways. Um, any changes to the roster? I don't think so. I don't see an obvious improvement here. To be to be honest with you, I mean we could try to get a veteran outfielder, but I think just letting Ibarra play is more valuable. And just seeing if we have anything with him, although it's already starting to look a little bit. Concerning. Our line our, we're so scoring the third most runs in the major leagues. Which is cool to see. I could sell four to keep Sam Laws, but it would be extremely expensive. I don't know, guys. I don't know. It is a bad deal. Dietarius Brooks is a player that I'm not interested in. Reject. No, these players both suck. Try again. You know what, Juan de Moya? Fucking hats off to you. You have turned your you've made yourself quite a career. Quite a career. Even if you never exceeded where you were for Oakland, you've been a really useful innings eater and made a lot of money over your career. That's a hundred and sixty million dollars. That's Walking around money. Um, what do we do with Sam Laws? I don't want Chris Gruner. Stop offering him game. You're just not that interesting to me. Oh my god, stop. Yes, I would love to have Wilson Disla. I cannot afford him. Do we trade Sam Laws? Do we trade Sam Laws knowing we will never get a better return? Let's talk about this. If I don't trade Sam Laws, I'm going to feel obligated to re-sign him. And that is something I cannot afford. I cannot realistically re-sign Sam Laws 
without causing big issues going forward. And he wants to get paid like Sean DeWitt. My problem is, I don't have that kind of money. Now I do, wait, it says arbitration estimate. I thought, wait, do I have you for arbitration? I don't think I do. I think the game is trying to trick me. All right, so let's, let's look at our bigger contracts right now. Are any of these contracts going away anytime soon? The benefit of keeping laws, the benefit of keeping laws is replacing Sean DeWitt. My present payroll is 22nd in the league. Am I nuts to want to keep Sam Laws? He's playing out of his mind this year. But even when he's not playing out of his mind, we're talking $8 million per win above replacement. He's more than exceeded that. I just don't like the lack of protection that I have. That's my concern. If we re-sign him, he's got all the cards. Every last one of them. He will have every card there is to have. But I think it's worth it. Why is it so hard for me to decide? I don't know. He's like, we're going to get a player better than Sam Laws. Let's begin with that. The fact is the player doesn't exist. Any player that we acquire instead of him is going to be a downgrade. The benefit of Sam Laws is being Sam Laws and the fact that he has so-called old player skills, his play discipline isn't going to go anywhere. He's going to age magnificently. I think I'm talking myself into keeping him. Let's try it. But I want to make some changes to the contract. First things first, I got to get a team option in here. I must. If I can't get a team option, then we're basically trapped. The second thing I want to get rid of is the player opt-out. No, I actually don't mind him having a player opt-out because I think it's really expensive. Once like 40 million, I can that'll be that'll be fine. But I get two team options with them actually. Oh right. Um now let's go ahead and try to reduce the cost. In 2047. If you will take 25 million. I'm not going to find a player as good as Sam Laws. I'm just not. I think we have to pull the trigger. Done. It's also going to increase fan interest. Which I know that my owner desperately wants. But it, it's really because we're not going to get a better player than him. Um, I'd love to trade Sinius. I just don't think anybody wants him. Um, let's start the trading deadline day. I want to see who's on the trading block. Um, what is this noise? Are you offering me yet another? You're offering a really good closer. But I don't need a closer. My bullpen is fine. Reject. I don't want mediocre pitchers. I 
There's a lot to like about Mike Holloway, but I don't think he's a good fit. I'd rather get somebody with a bit more upside than that. Um... <laughs> There are just so many relievers being offered, and like Joe McFarland wouldn't actually be terrible, but I would like Beckley a lot, but I can't afford that. I'm choosing. Well, I can't afford it. If my owner had would give me more fucking money, I'd do it, but. You'd be an excellent pitcher. I'd be all for this, but I know I can't afford that. Like, I, it is impossible for me to afford that. Like, giving up something equally expensive. Um, what if I offered you Sinius? Would that do anything for you? Sinius the Sinny Pig? No, it's not worth it. There's just nobody here that is worth getting excited about, I don't think. I'll skip to the next sim. I want to see if I get any more offers. Ken Robb has a lot of power. There's a lot to like about elite power. And what are you asking for? I'm not giving up Nelson Vigil. Nelson Vigil is a potential superstar. Please stop. And what did you tell me? Did you tell me that I'm nuts? Yeah. And that's not happening. I'm not giving you anything special for him. I don't think Holloway's worth it. I don't. Yeah, you can fuck right off with that, Angels. I would never make a trade like that. Mm, not that interesting. Didn't you play for me before? I feel like you did. You did. Not interested. Especially when Elliot Avani might end up being a really good player someday. No, I think this is fine. I mean, I guess there's value in Estrada. I just, I just don't see it. I'm sorry. I don't see it. Like, Nick Gerard isn't that interesting, but... We want after Jimmy you No, I can't afford Jimmy Younger. What do I have that is fungible? Like, what is my... I have a lot of relievers with all about the same skill set. I'm going to trade Jerry Sigmund for an outfielder. I'm going to look at... I know it's pending. Can I really not trade my player? That is so gross. I literally cannot do it because the trading deadline is almost over with. Well, that was stupid. Actually, I just saw a potential upgrade. What if we promoted Steve Seward and sent Ibarra back to the minors? That could actually be really, really good. 
Oh, the way Bard did just improve. Oh, we're just getting worse. God damn it. I keep falling for the exact same tricks every single time. I don't know what's wrong with me, friends. Um... Ibarra is just not hitting in the major leagues. I'm going to send him to the minors, and then the question is, who do I call up in his place? Dan Witsat is a really good hitter. If we activated him and then made Sinius back into an outfielder, that could be reasonably that could be a reasonably good choice. Um. I think Steve Seward, for now, is one of our better choices. I probably should have traded Robbie Herbertson in, in hindsight. But I don't think Dan Witsat is getting called up next season. Um, I think he's going to replace Sinius' spot, and, or possibly Herbertson's spot, too, on the roster, since Herbertson's been surpassed by Vigil, who has made significant improvements. Um, significant improvements, and is getting to the level where I'd like him to be. Even if he's not an amazing third baseman, he's good enough. And that's pretty valuable. Twenty games without allowing a run, and Sam Laws sticks around, and the fans are delighted. It's great. I guarantee you, I saw a bottom third payroll. I guarantee you. Damn, really a White Sox? Jesus. Uh, Panetta being out for four weeks is not great. I don't have a ready replacement for shortstop. Do I still have a bottom third payroll? Yes. But I think next year it'll be more. Um, I need a shortstop, and I need one fairly badly. Sam Brewer, you're in. All right, let us finish simming this month, and then we might make some additional changes. Look, we're by far the best team in the American League this year, and that means precisely nothing if we can't, you know, make some noise when the playoffs start. I don't like Takamoto losing contact. We are seeing players develop. Josh Tukes is getting there. Because a really good center fielder would let us pull DeWitt out of center field and probably make us a better team. I think Mr. Tukes needs a chance at the major league level. I think we're going to give him that chance right now. I'm going to go ahead and call him up and put him on the major league roster. I'm also going to bring up Witsat, Andy Barra, and Mitch Vaughn. Oh, I'd need to open up a spot. That's fine. Who's the worst overall player on my 38-man roster? Chris Eaton. Go fuck yourself. No, it's got to be... Yeah, it's got to be Chris Eaton. Chris Eaton sucks. We'll even designate. And we'll go ahead and put Mitch Vaughn on the staff too. 
we'll see how this works out. I just want to give some guys a cup of coffee so we can see if there's anything we can learn about them. Um, Ellie's going to miss a week. That's not great, but I'll survive. Can you stop games? Please. Nice work, RJ Edwards. He really is performing at a pretty high level, uh, which is nice to see. Chris Eaton, you can enjoy your time in the minors. Oh no, anyway. Keeping Sam Laws probably means saying goodbye to Sean DeWitt. And I think I'm comfortable with that. Obviously not this season, not next season, but when his contract is up, can you fucking stop Bobby Stoll? Can you just stop getting hurt, please? That would be great. Um, I need a starting pitcher pretty badly. Do I have any? I'll call up Phil Dixon and then we'll just let things go as they need to go. I've clinched a division already. And I think I'm about to clinch a number one seed if I have. No, that's actually a good question. I don't know who's going to clinch the number one seed. Um. I don't think it matters because there are two... Here's the thing. I've clinched a bye. That I feel confident about. Uh, because the top two teams in each league get a bye. Ooh, a player hit a milestone. I wonder if that was Sean DeWitt and what milestone he hit. 2,500 hits, maybe? Oh, 400 homers is what he just hit. I'll buy that. We'll absolutely take that. Maxi boy, work on your actual potential and you could be a really valuable piece to our puzzle. Four hundred homers for Sean DeWitt. How close are you to getting twenty five hundred hits? We'll get to two thousand next year. That's good. Short of something terrible happening, you'll get to two thousand hits next year. Um, and then it's just about racking up the counting stats to try to secure your entry into the Hall of Fame. Um, let's get people moved around uh, very quickly here. I think Basford just gets promoted. I don't think we think about it too hard. Brett Marks is far too good a pitching coach to, to languish. Let's get him up into high A. That seems good. Uh, can we win 100 games this year? Let's find out. We can and did. And an ERA crown for RJ Edwards. Nice. <clears throat> Let's get down to 26. Um, I can't keep two as much as I'd like to. Actually, I guess that doesn't matter. I am comfortable with this arrangement. I'm going to remove Ibar from the postseason roster and add Seward. Oh, Lester just totally shit the bed, and I don't think he did. No, he was actually reasonably decent. Uh, 
And then I really want Sam Brewer's defensive flexibility in case we need it. He's a little bit more useful than Chris Hughes, so let's go ahead and leave Hughes off the roster. Did Chris Hughes ever get a World Series ring with us? He did, right? Yeah, he got his ring. Uh, I'm going to take him off the postseason roster for the benefit of including um, Brewer. Especially if Pineda gets, can't go. I need somebody who can handle shortstop, and he can handle shortstop without too much of a hassle. Or I could leave off Sinius. Yeah, I'm going to leave off Sinius, actually. We'll keep Chris Hughes. We'll get a little bit more flexibility then. I like that idea. Um, I could ask for... Do I have any chance at all to add Josh Tukes? No, we're fine. We're fine. I need Herbertson for the same reason that I need Brewer in case Vigil can't go. This seems pretty okay. Uh let's let's get into some playoff action here. Uh first round, please and thank you. Okay, that is crucial. Uh, Phil Dixon, fuck off. You are do not get to make the postseason roster over Bobby Stoll. Yeah, I can't get eliminated in the first round. That's good. Uh, excellent start between DeWitt and Edwards. Uh, some timely relief out of the bullpen. Our AAA hitting coach is retiring. Let's go ahead and promote from within. Michael Soto's a good hitter, hitting coach. I actually like Malcolm Owens better, though. Oh, but you know what? If I promote Soto, I'll also be able to promote um, Owens. And then Grolman Gonzalez absolutely gets promoted. Oh, no, he can't be promoted because he doesn't care. Ben Johnson cares, though. Ben Johnson is the dude. Can I quickly grab a quality pitching coach, I wonder? Yes, I can. Nate Jones, please, I beg of you, become my pitching coach. I'm going to do the same thing for my hitting coach. Oh, let's get Samuel Hisiano and see if he's willing to, to join us. Done. All right. Zer Zarlin Dennis. Did you really get a better offer? You might have gotten a better offer. I will give you 126000 a season. I don't even care. Very good coach. Boom! A sweep. Nice. Nice. Is Nate Jones still waiting? Oh, he just got hired. Wait, what? Oh, somebody else hired him. Damn it. You ungrateful cow. I don't know why I called him a cow. Oh, uh, that's disappointing. I mean, I guess Santiago Garrido is a pretty decent choice, but he's not nearly as good as Nate Jones would have been. Oh, well. Uh, simulate until next round, please. And thank you. Really? I'll give you 90 grand. Uh, 
Alright, we got Hisiano, or Hichiano, or whatever his name is meant to be. Uh, off to a great start against Tampa. Uh, a rare, ooh, it's Juan Bardalis, another one of the latest traders who dares to have a good career outside of this team. 12, uh, 12 inning games aren't amazing, but look at Portner, though. How much did Portner pitch? Oh, well, Fredo Rivera got hurt again. Yeah, I will keep you in arbitration, but you are very injury prone, and I'm going to need to find another starter that I can trust. Um, wow, a rare missed up for RJ Edwards. He's actually been really, really good. Um, and I don't, I don't think I got my pitching coach either. I'll just wait till the off season when people get fired. That seems reasonable. Bobby Stoll locking it down. Well done, team. Well done. Another World Series crown approaches potentially. A's versus Cubs. Okay. Low key, RJ Edwards has had a masterful postseason. If we take just a super quick look at Mr. Edwards and we look at his postseason history here, look at his postseason he's had three wins, four starts. Each one about six innings. That's what you're looking for. That's good. That's good stuff. It's very good stuff. Um, uh, uh, a little bit of an issue in that game. Here comes Bobby Stoll. Did Stoll leave early? No, he just threw six pitches and then we put in the bullpen. I mean, I guess that's fine. That's not what I would have done. But as long as we win, I suppose that's all that matters. Uh, Pam they beat Pamphile, which isn't great. Like, beat, they beat the shit out of Pam Fila. You bring your closer because of a three-run homer. That's not great. It's not great. Edwards doesn't let us down, though. Edwards does not let us down. He has earned his new contract for this season, at least. Um, I don't know what the future might hold for RJ Edwards and the Oakland A's, but at least for this season. And there we go. A World Series championship once again. What a season. What an incredible season. Mm. 102 and 60 regular season. That doesn't happen by accident. Let's break it down and then we'll end the episode. What a season. And. This is going to sound like a broken record. What did we have this season? We have had in season fast. We had elite starting pitching that just got the job done every step of the way, uh, which was fantastic. Um, a bunch of people are retiring. Uh, Raheem Sinius is retiring. A few other people are retiring, mostly people I don't remember. I mean, the two guys I didn't resign ended up retiring, and I got a brand new contract for even more money. Let's break it down, yo. How did we do this season? What went well? Sam Laws was the best player on the roster. He's getting paid like it, but he was the best player on the roster this year. An absolutely legendary on base percentage, plenty of power. He just got, he scored runs. And was incredibly useful. Sean DeWitt. If this is what DeWitt slowing down looks like, I will cry myself to sleep on a giant pile of money. 
like he he just keeps being awesome every single season and i don't know what else i can say about him that i haven't already said and the fact is i keep wanting to take him out of center field but he's actually pretty good at it like maybe i should accept the fact he is our center fielder and take the w um hello rookie of the year takimoto He's already proven to be an excellent player. Breakout's a little bit con concerning, a little bit of an issue, but he, he produced five wins in his rookie year. Oh, and by the way, he's also a pretty decent second baseman too. When you're going to spend a lot of money on a player, you've got to you've got to hit, and so far we've hit on him. And nothing about this stat line shows me that it's unrepeatable. He's got good power, great on base skills. If he just makes a, a little a hard contact with a few more balls and strikes out a few less times, he's going to be an all-star every year. Like he was this year. Um, Sean DeWitt, the man with uh, nine all-star selections. Still never been the MVP, though. Maybe someday, but probably not this year. Nelson Vigil just stepped up and said, no, you were right to believe in me and had an amazing season. Um, he cut his strikeout rate, increased his walk rate, hit more home runs. The only reason he doesn't look better than he does is the AI's weird insistence he needed to hit leadoff, which is kind of dumb. But everything else about him is incredible. Uh, he had a great season. After a disappointing first season, he's really come back and, and helped us out here. If you had Joe Stock as a three-win player, then I'd like your opinion who's going to win the lottery. Because uh, he had a great season. A truly exceptional season. Uh, Chris Orr is here to hit dingers, and to hit dingers is what he did. I do worry about his long-term future. That is a concern of mine. Is he going to be able to keep hitting for power and drawing enough walks that his relative lack of contact won't be a huge issue for us? But for now, at least, I'm pleasantly surprised with him. Juan Pineda was placed in an unfortunate situation, and while I still don't think we have our starting uh, shortstop for all time, he was okay. He was decent. But we got a tremendous performance out of our bench. Ted Armstrong, great backup catcher. Brandon Bays, good offense. Steve Seward, Dan Wissett. We got a lot of talented players performing at a high level. We weren't just a good offense. We were a deep offense. And I think that's something we've missed in years past. Where all it would take is one season, a player slowing down, and we'd be completely hosed. Now, Sam Loss. Hi. This is not the real Sam Loss. Because he's not going to hit for a 380 bad dip again. But if he just keeps churning up 2045s, that's perfectly fine with me. And I do think he can be even better. Our pitching. It's a good year when your worst pitcher is Bobby Stoll. And the only reason he looks bad is because he only pitched 120 innings this year. That's really good. He had a really fine year. But Arch Edwards has cemented himself as a genuine bona fide ace. Are we paying him a shit ton of money? Yes. Is he worth it? I think he is. We've done it again. We took another reliever, put him in the rotation, and watched him thrive. Uh, he had a really great season, did Zari and Dennis. Mike Ellie, there was a time when I thought he was going to be the ace for all time. But he's just... I don't know what happened to him. I genuinely don't. He used to be a really good stuff and control pitcher, and both those things have disappeared. Maybe he peaked early. Maybe we pushed him too hard as a youngster. I don't know. 
I mean, if this is what it looks like on his downside, I'm not complaining. But I'm also... He already looks kind of disappointing based on what we were hoping to get out of him. Uh, we got some amazing relief performances. Shamar Pamphile is once again proving to be an excellent pitcher. One of the best closers in the league. Uh, Rogelio Morales turned out to be a really nice acquisition. He pitched a fantastic season. Despite his huge weakness of walking everybody, he strikes out even more people. And that's obviously going to be a big thing. Wilfredo Rivera is on the way out. We have to get another starting pitcher to back up um, Dennis... Edwards, and when he's healthy, still. But let's not lose sight of the fact of any, a critical fact. 14th round, and he's a World Series champion. That's awesome. That's really good. And he has been a pretty solid starting pitcher. Maybe not an ace, but a solid one. And I think we have to chalk that up as a development plan. Um, well, we do need another starting pitcher, though. Maybe that ends up being Brexton May. Who knows? But we got some really good performances from our bullpen this year. I think they were truly unsung heroes because so many just gave us so many quality innings. Uh, it really helped us out a huge amount. Um... Only Mort King was disappointing, and I think it was disappointing because we forced him into the rotation, which is not what he is best suited for. Um, but I'm very happy with how this season went. We also got really lucky injury-wise. Um, by the end of the season, we had no injured players, which is insane. Which leads me to believe that we might be in for a hurting next season, but for now at least. Got ourselves a pretty damn good team. Our future upgrades, um, I think, are twofold. I'd like a better shortstop. And I'd like another starting pitcher. I think those are the two things I think we need the most. Um, I think we have to find a new right fielder. Now, whether that's just giving Ibarra one last chance, uh, Seward or somebody else, he is drastically disappointed at the major league level. Drastically. Still only 23. There still might be something to him, but right now he looks like a not great player. But this is an amazing season. Everything went super well, and it'll probably never happen again. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure to let me know in the comments. Do you want to see more Oakland A's, or do you want me to move on with a franchise, a brand new franchise, an expansion franchise, at the end of year 25 or year 30? So... Let me know in the comments. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And this has been Ab Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you a very fine day.